I'll show you how to ditch your unwieldy YAML configuration files in favor of beautiful and clean Pydantic configuration as code. Now, I'm just not a fan of YAML. I prefer JSON, although it's not without its problems, like it doesn't support comments. Although at least JSON has only one valid file extension. Anyways, this goes way beyond my preferences and personal likes because being able to express configuration as Python code has many benefits. What I'm about to show you is particularly useful when the final result, the actual configuration file you need has to be written in YAML. For example, if you have a Kubernetes application that uses a YAML file to configure it, or something like a CICD GitHub action configuration. We're gonna show examples of both of those. If you're keen to get to these examples, you can skip down to the code section. I've got timestamps in the video below, or stick with me to hear my argument as to why you should be interested in expressing configuration as Python code using Pydantic. I'm Alex, I'm a data engineer, and here on Zazen Codes, I'm teaching full stack data science. In order to support the channel, you could check out my premium content over on Patreon, and you could sign up for my newsletter. I only send one email a week when I upload a new video. Quick introduction on some terminology. YAML stands for Yet Another Markdown Language. And Pydantic is a Python library that helps with data modeling and validation. Since I'm a Python guy, I'm interested in expressing these configurations as Python code. And this also integrates really well into my applications. So these Pydantic things that we're gonna be looking at can be used as domain models within our application without needing to use YAML at all. But if you're using a different language, you could just as easily apply these concepts to that language. JavaScript, Go, Rust. Also, I was inspired to make this video from an episode of MLOps community podcast, where the person being interviewed talked about how he converted all of his YAML configurations to Python using Pydantic. That guy really hated YAML as well. So here's a bunch of benefits of using Python for your configuration. One, type safety and validation. This is the big one. You can ensure that each field you're setting in your configuration is the right type, but also in the right range of values that you require for your business use case. For example, if you have a configuration that's setting some resources, you could ensure that you're not using too many resources. Like maybe you only want a maximum of four CPUs. We're gonna see examples of this with Pydantic. Dynamic configuration. For example, if you had to set up a configuration based on some values in a database, you could have a Python script that fetches those values and populates a configuration file dynamically. And lastly, the domain model. By expressing your configuration as Python code, we're creating a domain model that we can then use in our application. Having domain models has huge benefits such as autocomplete and IDEs when you're developing. You can use them for type hinting for more readable code. And in the following demonstrations, everything we're going to be doing with Pydantic is cr to create these domain models. Now let's get to the demonstrations. I've got four of them. The first one is on logging and then GCP app engine then Kubernetes, and lastly, CIDC with GitHub Actions. As usual, you can get access to all of this source code on GitHub. If you go to my Zazen Code YouTube repository, click this code button, and we're gonna grab the HTTPS URL, and I'll say git clone, and I'll paste that in. And in the source directory, there's a folder called replace YAML with Pydantic, and that's where we're gonna be working. The general idea of what I'm gonna show you here is one, Instead of writing YAML, express all of that information as Python code. Two, perform validation on that information. Three, convert that information into a YAML document. And then four, use that YAML document for the actual application configuration. And lastly, add all of this to version control so that it's reproducible. The first thing I'll do is open up Vim. I'm gonna look at our requirements and I'm gonna install a virtual environment, python-m vim vim and I'll say vim bin pip install-r requirements. Coming back up to our code, I have a folder called generate yaml or a file rather. And this file is what's gonna generate our yaml configurations from our Python code. I'll talk about this in a second, but we're gonna be using this in each demonstration. And the first demonstration is about logging. So let me zoom in on this and I'm gonna open up our app. This is like the result of our demonstration. We're gonna just run this simple script that runs a debug, an info, a warning, and an error log to our screen. And what it does is it uses our logger object that we're gonna load from a configuration file. I can actually get rid of this line and we're gonna be looking at this logging config.yaml file in order to get the configuration for our logs. 
I have a function to set up the logging and that takes in that configuration path. It opens it up, it parses it using pyyaml, and then it loads it as a dictionary into our logging module. Now, as you can see over in the left hand side, we don't have this logging config file, but we have this config.py file. Now, I realize I'm jumping through some hoops here, but this is just for a demonstration of how this all works. We're going to see more practical demonstrations in part two, three, and four. So let's open up this configuration file and see what we've got. Here is our logging config, and I'm expressing this as a Pydantic object using a logging config class, which I've defined here. It inherits from Pydantic base model, as do these other classes. And these other classes are going to be kind of like referenced in our logging config. So for example, formatters is a dictionary where the keys are strings and the values are these formatter configs. And the reason we do this is so that we can have subfields in a clean way with Pydantic. But we don't have to do it that way. For example, for hand handlers, our keys are strings, and our values are just dictionaries. So rather than using Pydantic with this kind of layered approach, like with this logging config, it has three keys and value pairs. We don't have to do that. So for example, down in handlers, I'm just simply setting this to be a dictionary. But the power of Pydantic is that you can use these kind of sub objects and express a more rich data model. Now, there's no validation going on here aside from type checking. So for example, our version is one, but let's say I tried to create a string called one. I'm gonna get yelled at by my linting program because it's it's complaining that this can't be assigned to version. It's not an integer, it's a string. So it's forcing me to create a version that's a string. Also, if I use like 2.32, it's gonna yell at me because that's a float. Next, I have a script that's gonna convert this code into YAML, it's called generate YAML config. I don't need this. And so what we do is first I'm appending the previous, the parent folder using sys. What this does is it gives me access to this generate YAML from Pydantic object. If I go to that definition and I'm going to open up that file, it's that generate YAML file, which I was talking about earlier. So I'm just sort of importing that from the parent library. Um, now, if I go back to that script, it was over here. So I have access to this function and then I'm just calling that function and I'm passing in a few variables from this local login folder. So from the config file, I'm importing my logging config. I can go back to that. That's this variable we were just looking at. Okay, bouncing back. I'm also importing the domain object, the sort of class logging config. So I'll go over there and that's the, the parent class. That's the type of this thing. And I'm importing that explicitly and I'm actually passing it into this function. And we'll see why I'm doing that in a second. And the second argument here is just the file name, the output that we expect. So now I'm going to actually go ahead and run this. So I'll go into the one logging folder and I'll just say Python generate YAML config and actually that will work. So now I'm going to come up, hop over into my logging config file and this is the one I've just created. So now you can understand why I had these nested fields because over in the YAML we have formatters for example which is a dictionary it has a key called simple and then that simple is actually another dictionary and it has a key called format and then the value of that key is a string and this explains explains our data modeling over on the left. Great, so now that we have that YAML file, we can actually run our application over here. So I'm gonna hop down and we're gonna run that. And here we go, it's outputting our logs just as expected. And that's using this YAML file. So if I was to say, go ahead and delete that and come back down, this is not gonna work anymore. I could recreate that log file and then run the app and now it's working. At this point, you're probably curious about this generate YAML file, how that works. So let's open that up and talk about it. We are calling this generate YAML from Pydantic object and it takes in the object, which is a base model type. It's derived from a base model. Next, we're passing the output file path of our YAML config. And thirdly, we're passing the object model type. So I've used this type hint here called type and it's the type of the base model that we're passing in as this third argument. Then I'm just making sure the path that we wanna to write to is created on our system. And then we're writing to that file using this code here, yaml.dump, and we're calling the model dump method on the Pydantic object, which we're passing in. Lastly, if I've specified the type of object, we're going to run some validation. And so I'll just try this validation function, and if we get an error, we'll know that we failed to validate our YAML. But otherwise, we'll know that it was validated. And the reason we'll know is because of this line right here, where we actually create our domain object using the YAML data. We're actually reading the file that we just wrote, 
and then passing that data in to create our object. And if that all runs, then we know we've run validation okay. This is a typo, I'll get rid of that. So let's go on to example number two for GCP app engine. I just learned this new command for clearing all my buffers. It's percent BD, boom, they're all gone. Okay, going on to part two for GCP app engine. I'll open up the readme and I've got this um, markdown preview uh, plugin for NeoVim so we can open up the readme here. Um, app engine is a, is a Google product and it's configured using an app.yaml file. And this lets you specify resources for like scaling, for example. So if I just kind of look this up, I can show you what I mean. We're gonna want this app.yaml reference and there's an example right here of, of what that file might look like. So let's express something like this as Python code using Pydantic. Final result of our demonstration is that we wanna be able to run a command like this, gcloud app deploy and then specify a, a YAML file. But we don't wanna actually have to have that YAML file maintained in our system. We want to do that with Python. So I've got this config folder and inside of here I've got init and this is where I'm going to define my configuration. It's called app engine config. I have an entry point and then I have some runtime config like the operating system, the Python version, and then I have a resources object with the number of CPUs, how much memory, what the disk size is going to be, and then I'm defining the domain objects themselves sort of separately from the configuration in this domain folder. And here's these objects that we're creating. I have an app engine config, and it actually has a runtime and an environment which have default values. Let's get this open alongside of our actual configuration. So on the right hand side, we have our domain model, app engine config, a runtime config, which is a runtime config object. Let's follow that and look at what the runtime config object is doing. It has an operating system, which is a string, and it has to match a given pattern or else we're going to get a validation error. So I'm saying that we're we're only allowed to have Ubuntu runtimes. And for the Python version, it has to be greater than or equal to 3.7. So over on my left hand side, let's say I'm trying to set a Python version of 3.4. It's going to let me do that until I try and compile this. So let's do the compiling now. I'll go into this demonstration and I have this file called generate YAML config. And let's try and run that. And I'm getting an error. It's saying runtime config. And what's the error? Input should be greater than or equal to 3.7. So it's not allowing me to have a bad version of Python. I could have 3.8. So let's do that and run it. And it looks like everything worked and validation went OK. How cool is this? So what else can I do? Well, if we look at our resources, I have a CPU that has to be greater than 1 and less than or equal to 2. I also have limits on my memory size and my disk size. If you create a resource that's too big, it's going to be really expensive. So it's going to help you put limits and safety on your application. Now, by the way, when we ran this, we were able to create that YAML file I was talking about. And here it is. It's a new file in our Git repository. It's called app.yaml. Let's open that up and compare that to our configuration. Here we have an entry point, we have an environment, we have scaling, and then we have our resources. And notice, for example, CPU is 1.0. So it's not an integer, whereas manual scaling is one without a zero, so it is an integer. And that's because of our domain model. If I look at CPU, that's defined as a float. It probably shouldn't be a float because it doesn't make sense to have like half a CPU, right? So I'm going to change that to an integer field. Now I can recompile this, and if I pop back up and go back to my app.yaml, CPU is now one, like an integer, like we expect. I could also show you an example of like a bad uh, operating system. If I tried to create this, let's say I said Debian instead, let's go down, and when I try and do this, it's gonna give me an error. A string must match a pattern. It must be like Ubuntu. Let's fix that up, and we'll recompile everything come back and we're in business here. And so now I'd be in a great place to actually run this application. And I could say gcloud app deploy app.yaml. And when it comes to Git, I would want to commit all of this to version control. So what I'm saying is if I say git ls files, I want to see everything in here, including my domain configuration, my app.yaml, my generate yaml config, all of this should be part of the application. So it's all reproducible. The next example is Kubernetes. Kubernetes configs can be pretty ugly. Our domain model is not as ugly as a YAML file, if you ask me. 
This comes from an example on Kubernetes website. So let's go to that example and have a look. It's configuring Redis using a config map. There's some instructions for getting this up and running. You create this um, example Redis config, and we're not gonna be converting this small configuration to a Pydantic model, um, but you could go ahead and run this. If you had Kubernetes running, you wanted to try this out, you can run this first command to just apply this small config. But then the next command actually pulls this config here called Redis pod. It pulls it from GitHub and it applies it. If I scroll down, that is the configuration right here, this redispod.yaml. So we're going to express this using Pydantic. I've done a pretty comprehensive domain model. The main configuration object is this pod config. So I'll type gd to go to that definition. And it has the top level keys of an API version, a kind, metadata, and a spec. And metadata and spec sub out to these sort of sub keys. And we can kind of follow the trail specifically with spec. So pod spec here has a list of containers and a list of volumes. And these containers themselves have lots of um, keys and values like environments, which is a list of these environment variables. We can kind of follow this trail and do in, like intricate type hinting on each of these keys. And here's what the final result looks like. Now, I think in terms of how attractive this is, it's definitely subjective. Um, I, I'm not saying like YAML is the root of all evil, but as this grows, it's just going to be completely unwieldy and complicated. And type checking this stuff is going to be a total nightmare. You're going to want like scripts that can load these and, you know, validate them. But by expressing them in this way, we're just baking all of that validation right in when we try to build our YAML config or when we use this in our application as a domain object. I actually don't have a, a function to create YAML from this yet. So let's copy that in and I'm going to open that up and we're just going to adapt this to our demonstration. If I go over here, it's called pod config now. So I got to change that to pod config. And then my domain object isn't called app engine config. It was called pod config. So let's create that. Now these aren't accessed, and so I'm just gonna update my call down here. And I'll go back here, and instead of app config, I'll say pod config. And the file we want isn't gonna be app.yaml. If I go back to the internet here, the file that we're expecting is called redispod.yaml. So I'll grab that, and I'll get rid of this and put it in here. And now we can run this. So I'm gonna open up a new pane, and I'm gonna say three Kubernetes, and I'll say Python generate YAML config. It says validation was okay. It's outputting what that looks like as a JSON. And now what I can do is open up our YAML file that resulted, redispod.yaml. And this is equivalent to what we were seeing online. See, we have API version, kind, metadata, and then we have this spec with all of its required fields. Pretty cool, right? And this is super extensible. This generate YAML script, I think you'll find really useful when it comes to doing this yourself. So I wanted to show you an example of actually doing this together for the CI CD example. I don't have any code in here. We're gonna do this right now live together. Now shit's gonna get pretty real here. And there's one big difficulty with this approach, which I haven't mentioned yet, that's gonna come to the surface here and we're gonna have to deal with it. So I pulled up a blog post from Git hub and this has an example of a CI CD workflow and these pipelines can use serverless functions in order to like run um, testing code for example for us so if I scroll down I'm gonna come to the CI CD configuration YAML there's another YAML file down lower which is a bit more complicated but let's start with this one and I'm gonna show you how we can use ChatGPT to create our Pydantic data model for us I'll say express this YAML file as Python code um, using Pydantic and I'll just paste that in. And then importantly, I'm gonna say, ensure that I can use the following functions to convert between the two. And I'm gonna paste those functions, which I have right here. Copy those, throw them down here. So it's importing our base model field and some typing stuff, and it's creating our data model. And it's writing some example code of how we can kind of do this validation, and it's actually defining our workflow. This is the actual configuration we want. I'm gonna start there. So in this CI CD folder, I'll create a new file, and I'm gonna call it config. I'll paste this workflow in here. Now I'm gonna define all of these Pydantic classes. Starting from workflow, I'll just select to the top. 
Come on over, put that in. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Get rid of this stuff. Optional's good, but list, we don't really need list to be capitalized. So I can get rid of that. Um, in older versions of Python, you do need that. And then I'll just format everything by saving it. Let's get rid of this comment. So mostly things are working well, but we have a few errors here. There's two that I wanna call out. There's one that's with, I have an underscore here. And the other one is for runs on right here. What's going on with these things? Well, if I look at runs on, um, that's cool. That's a key here, but look at the field. I have this alias that says runs dash on. Why is that? Well, if I go back to the internet for the example, notice how the key has a dash in it. But in Python, we're not allowed to have variables that have dashes in them. So Pydantic really struggles here. The variable key has to be an underscore it, or, or something else, but it can't have a dash in it. So we're using that alias. Now, down in pull request, I have a field which is an alias, which is super strange. I don't think I need that. I can get rid of that one. But what's the other one I had a problem with? It was this one, with. So with is a reserved keyword in Python, right? I would say with open. It's for these context um, windows. That's how I would use with. So I can't use it in here like that. See, it's, it's giving me problems. It, it, it wants to be like with, it, 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 the linter knows that this is a problem. So I can't do that. So um, we're throwing an underscore here and we're using an alias right here to, to indicate that, okay, the field name is with. But that gives us problems uh, with our linting tool down here when we try to validate it. This is a limitation, but we're gonna see how we can at least push through this limitation and render our YAML file and validate it as expected, even though I didn't find a way to get rid of these linting errors. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just try and run this as is. Despite the linting errors, let's see if it works. I'll go into our new folder and I'm gonna say Python config. I do get an error. It says um, there's a validation error for node dash version. It doesn't, it doesn't like what's going on here. So what I can do is add something in. I was looking into this and I can add this field here called config dict. And I need to say model config equals config dict populate by name equals true. You can see in the example they're giving here, they have an alias for name and the full name, and they're able to instantiate this in two different ways. They can use the alias or they can use the actual field name. And that's only possible if you do this model config in this way. So I'm gonna do that in order to try and get this working again. So let's see everything that required an alias, I'm gonna add it on there. So that's this one, that's this one. Oh, also this node version, I'll do that here. And then config dict needs to be imported from Pydantic, so I'll just add that like this. And let's go back down. We're still getting these linting errors, but let's see if it runs. And it does, config runs just fine. Let's see, I called it workflow, I'll hop back down, and I'm just gonna print that so we can see that it is in fact working. So unfortunately, the only way I know to clean this up um, would be to go through and add PyWrite ignore um, on each of these lines. Now this isn't great because it destroys the functionality of our linting tool, at least for these specific fields. However, as we see, the, the, Py, the Pydantic validation will still work. Let me give you an, an example of that. So let's say my names, um, let, let's, let's enforce these to match a pattern. So I'm gonna say field like this, and the pattern is gonna be, I want it to definitely start with an uppercase letter. So it has to be some uppercase letter at the very start. So after this caret, which indicates the start of the URL. Um, I want to have some uppercase letter, and then you know we can just sort of like match whatever after that point. Alrighty, so um, I wanna do that for all of our name fields. So I have one down here, and now let's check it out. So this is an uppercase letter. Let's do that as a lowercase, and I'm expecting this now to throw an error for us. And here it's doing that. It's saying, okay, the name is no good. It, it should match this pattern. Okay, cool, so that's great. Like this is still working as a type checking tool and a validation tool. So I fixed the name and now it's working again. So next let's finish this example up and I wanna actually implement a function to be able to create this YAML file to create a YAML file for this workflow. I'll go over to our logging example and I'm gonna copy the generate YAML config. Uh, come on down here and paste it in, open that up. 
So from config, I'm importing logging config, but it was called workflow, and the config object was called workflow uppercase. So down here, I'll say workflows in here. At the end, I'll say, whoops, workflows like this. And what do I want to call this? If I go back to the blog post, um, he called it test. All right, well, it's not too exciting, but I'll just do that. Um, bom, bom, get that in here. Great, now this is calling this generate YAML from config right here. Let's give it a shot, generate YAML config. And it seems like it's working. So this is like our final result. Let's see how well we've done. Ah, this is a bit of a problem. Runs on is an underscore. So we're gonna have to fix that. Let's try and figure this out. I'll say model dump uh, with hmm, alias pydantic. Okay, um, this looks like there's a flag, which I can say by alias equals true when I'm doing um, the model dump. So let's, okay, let's, let's try that out. So in here, I'm just going to put that. Now let's try this again. Okay, validated, all right. Let's see if the test looks better. Sweet. All right. So now we're getting the underscores like we expect. These null fields are a little concerning to me. I wouldn't want those to be in my YAML file. Um, let's see if there's a way to fix that. Null fields in uh, model dump pydantic. Okay. looks like I have another option. Exclude none equals true. Let's plug that in. Over here, I'll add that in. We'll run this again. Everything worked. And now I'm going to go, oops, back to my test. Okay, so now this is looking really good. The only difference I can see is that on has quotes in it in our rendered config. And that's totally acceptable. It's okay for YAML keys to have quotes. And so in summary for the CI CD example, we were able to successfully express our continuous integration workflow as a pydantic data model object with Python code that we could validate. And then we were able to convert that to a YAML file, which we could then use to run our continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline with a tool like GitHub Actions. And we were able to do that by running a script, which we would expect to package up to version control along with our data model. And that depends on a helper function called generate YAML from Pydantic object, which could be used in general for any project for generating YAML from Pydantic code. And just recently in this section, we did extend this to be able to support aliases properly and to be able to exclude fields that are none so we're rendering proper yaml like we expect so what do you think about this did i convince you to try this out i'm going to talk about some limitations of this we've already encountered and overcome a few limitations but there's a few more that are persistent or that i at least want to have in the open and discuss the first one is a lack of comments. YAML supports comments naturally, but the method that we're discussing here has no functionality for including comments. The other glaring flaw in our methodology is the order. YAML files have an inherent order which helps bring structure and understanding into the files, and we completely destroy that order in these examples. I'm sure you noticed that. It doesn't destroy the functionality of the configuration file, but it does make it really hard to interpret it. Of course, that's why we're expressing our configuration as Python code so that it's easier to interpret and validate, make sure it looks correct. So we shouldn't really be even looking at the YAML files. We just have to focus on our Python code. That said, I did suggest committing the YAML files to version control. And by doing that, you're putting them out in the open and people will be looking at them. The other limitation obviously is our keys, having to sort of sidestep around them with aliases and use these sort of um, linting pyrite ignore in order to not get errors in our Python code. This is kind of messy stuff and it's like work that we don't want to have to do to deal with this problem, but it's still pretty straightforward to solve. Now, how would you solve these other problems, the commenting and the ordering problem? You could imagine hand rolling some solution for this. And I think that would be a great idea. However, I will warn you about the trade-off in this. Everything is a trade-off in computer science. In fact, everything in life is a trade-off. But if we want to get this really clean ordering and some nice comment integration, we're going to be adding complexity. And what we've done so far 
does already add complexity. We now need these helper functions and we need to create these intricate domain objects, but the benefits are huge with all of the validation and the type checking, the safety. So despite this added complexity, I'm going to call that a good trade-off in my opinion. Honestly, are you going to give this a shot? Let me know. I would love to hear what you think about all of this. I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and consider subscribing in order to support the channel. I'm Alex, and I'll see you in the next one. Namaste.